Hi, Stephen from Owner Disown. Today I'm reviewing the 15-inch Lenovo Y740 and I will be comparing it to the 15-inch Dell G7 which I reviewed here. Now both are also available as a 17-inch model. Dell has updated their models to include the 9th gen CPUs and even a 2080 Micro-Q in their 15-inch one which is only currently available in the 17th version of the Y740 but I do hear that in June they will be refreshing this to include the 15-inch. Also available, if not now, but soon, Dell will have an OLED display option. Now, pricing-wise, Dell were asking a lot of money when it first came out. I paid $2,200 for my 2070 Max-Q model, and that only came with one stick of RAM, which did affect performance. Now, though, they offer dual-channel uh, options and more competitive pricing. Now, in my comparison benchmarks, I use dual-channel RAM. Lenovo, however, priced competitively from the outset, starting at under $1,400 for the 2060 and $1,630 for the 2070 Max-Q model. They also have regular sales, and I have seen my 2070 Max-Q as low as $1,385. Plus, they take student and veteran discounts. Now, both are very nice looking machines. They are made of aluminium, and they both can fit nicely into a business setting. The only thing giving the Y740 away that it is actually a gaming machine is that it has RGB lighting on the lid and the air vents. Now this can be configured or turned off using the Corsair IQ software though. Both have hinge forward design to accommodate larger rear heat sinks and I find that it makes it easier to carry this around, you know, when the laptop is open. It gives you something to grab onto. I really like how the Y740 has lit icons showing what the rear ports are. Both laptops I tested had a 6-core i7-8758 CPU and two sticks of 8GB RAM. Both also have a nice 144Hz IPS 1080p panel, but the Y740 did have slightly better color accuracy with an sRGB of 93% versus 91% on the G7. And given its Dolby Vision HDR, it is the display of choice. It is a bit brighter and vibrant, but ghosting performance is pretty similar. In terms of backlight bleed, there is no comparison. The Y740 is definitely worse, and although I didn't notice it on everyday use, it is certainly there. One huge advantage the Y740 has is that it has G-Sync to eliminate tearing and an option to switch to hybrid or optimus mode, you know, to increase battery life. Both are easy to get into. Now the Y740 definitely has more air intakes underneath, but I'm not a great fan of the big plastic shroud. It does spoil the aesthetic. One big advantage the Dell has is an option for a larger 90 watt hour battery versus the 55 watt hour one on the Y740. Now that being said, the Y740 did surprise me. With 25% brightness, power saver and streaming YouTube, I got two hours, 20 minutes with G-Sync activated and four hours in hybrid mode. And to be fair, that is perfectly fine for me. The G7 actually only got me four hours, but I did see close to eight hours with the same battery in the G5. Now to get that larger battery in the G7, you need to forego the mechanical drive. But if you want the extra storage, you must get the 60 watt hour battery. And then you will be pretty much identical to the Y740. Both have one M.2 PCI Express NVMe slot and two RAM slots. Now looking at the cooling system, both have four heat sinks, but the G7 has more heat pipes. And one would think therefore that the G7 will run the coolest. The Y740 does have the option to max out the fans. I found the easiest method was to press FN and Q. Now the G7 has no fan control, but both systems produced the same 48 decibels of noise. Comparing the chassis thermals, the Y740 is definitely cooler, both on the keyboard deck and underneath. It's not even close. Also, you can clearly see the lack of hot air being pushed out of the left heat sinks on the G7 where the CPU is. The Y740 exhausts the hot air very well. Both have speakers that fire down at the front. The fit and finish on the Y740 is very good. Here's the Y740 against the Triton 500 and it definitely has much louder and fuller sounding speakers, but they do distort at max volume. The G7 speakers are also pretty loud, you know, similar to the Y740. And obviously both are good for gaming, listen, listening to music or watching videos. The standout feature of the Y740 keyboard over the G7 is its per key RGB lighting. It is definitely one of the best I've seen out there and it's fully customizable via the IQ software. By contrast, the G7 has lighting in four different zones. Both have a Windows Precision trackpad and are equally as good. 
Now, if you prefer separate mouse buttons, the Y740 will have you covered. And although they are on the small side, they work well. Now, the keys on the Y740 are well spaced, but if you desire a number pad, the G7 is your best option. Instead, the Y740 has six function keys on the left hand side, which pushes the keyboard to the right. And I did find that I mistyped a little bit more. And on occasion, I would press the Lenovo Vantage button at the top instead of the escape key. The key below it activates the recording app. You have two macro keys and a keyboard brightness control. The circular power button is placed centrally on both systems. And in the USA, neither seem to have a fingerprint reader. But in Europe, the G7 does have this option. On the left hand side, the Y740 has a heatsink, a combo headphone mic jack, and a Thunderbolt port. On the right hand side, there is the Nova hole that allows you to do a system recovery if your system fails to boot normally. There is a USB 3.1 Type A port that supports power delivery even when the laptop is off, and another air exhaust. Now, both make good use of the ports at the back. The Y740 has a mini display port, HDMI two USB 3.1 type A ports, Ethernet jack, Kensington lock, and the power connector. Unlike the G7, the Y740 has its webcam at the bottom. And here's the webcam, of course, down at the bottom. It's at 720p, and this is what it looks and sounds like. And also, when you're typing. In terms of quality, there's actually not much difference between them. The BIOS on the Y740 allows you to switch between the discrete and hybrid graphics. BIOS Backflash, which is useful if you don't like the existing BIOS, and enabling or disabling the always-on USB for charging. The Lenovo Vantage software shows the system stats and shortcuts such as hybrid demo mode, so switching between G-Sync and Optimus. The input option lets you configure the macro keys. System tools allows you to uh, access the updates, you know, configure the webcam settings, and Dolby Audio settings. Let's look at how the two systems perform. The G7 scores 15,571 points in Firestrike with a graphic score of 17,410. Now the Y740 takes a lead with a score of 15,868 and a graphic score of 17,958. So a nice performance boost there for the Y740. But using these overclock settings of 188 MHz on the GPU core and an undervolt on the CPU, we then see an excellent score of 16,700 and a 7% improvement in graphics score. Now, this is within spitting distance of an RTX 2080 Max Q. And in Time Spy, the Y740 scores 7,000 points at stock and 7,400 when overclocked, compared to the 7,600 with a 2080 Max Q. Again, the G7 is in the rear. Here is Far Cry 5 Ultra settings with Max Fan on the Y740. Now this is one of the hottest games out there and you will notice that it does a good job of trying to maintain about 45 watts on the CPU. Sure, there are spikes which after burner doesn't pick up which sees the CPU temp spike to the mid 90s. Compared to the Aero 15 and G7 with the same CPU and a 2070 Max-Q, the Y740 edges ahead and at 92 FPS matches my stock 2080 Max-Q in my Triton 500. In Battlefield 5, DX11 Ultra settings, the CPU runs at around 60 watts and as a result gets a bit warm, again in the mid 90s, and throttles down to the 45 watt level and 3300 MHz. Now apply my undervolt and GPU overclock settings, it sees the CPU clock stay closer to the 45 watt mark and as a result the temperatures and clock speeds are better. We also see a slight increase in frame rate. Even at stock settings though, we see an 8% advantage over the Aero 15 and compared to the MSI GE75 with a full power 2070, it's not too far away. Now let's look at ray tracing using ultra settings. Even though the GPU is being well worked, it remains really cool. Again, the CPU starts off at 60 watts and good clocks, but there, then it throttles down to 45 watts and about 3400 megahertz. Still, the frame rates are pretty good, and we see a very good improvement over both the G7 and the Aero 15. To put this into perspective, my 2080 Max-Q Triton 500 also averages 59 FPS, which is amazing. Overwatch Epic settings, we see an excellent frame rate, perfectly suited to this 144Hz display. The CPU settles to around about the 45W mark, with a max of 56 watts and an average of 87 degrees. And indeed, we see another good performance boost over the Dell G7 and only about 10% behind the 2080 Max-Q. Here we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider 
using higher settings, stock settings on the left and undervolted and overclocked on the right. Now this game definitely sees an improvement. We see cooler temperatures and faster frame rates. Even at stock though, the performance is great. The Y740 nearly matches the 2070 in the GE75 and is not far away from the 2080 Max-Q. The G7 is left quite far behind. If you play PUBG then, performance is also good. Generally the CPU is at about the 40 watt mark and averages 72 degrees. I saw a minimum of 112 FPS and an average of 133. Finally, we have Fortnite. Epic settings, the Y740 maintains a good clock rate, pulling 40 watts. Sure, you will see the odd spike into the 90s, but all in all, it runs cool and fast. Again, it beats the G7 by a smaller margin this time, but actually performs similar to the full RTX 2070. So let's look at the clock rates, the power consumption and the temperatures. I compare against uh, those from the G7 with the same specs in green. The Y740 not only runs faster, it achieves this with less power and runs cooler. From a gaming perspective, it outperforms the G7 in every way. Look at the GPU wattage. It averages 84 watts, which is the max power pull on the 2070 Max-Q on the G7. Its average max power pull was 97 watts. I even saw it pull 101 watts. So Lenovo definitely uses the 90 watt version of the GPU here. Kudos to Lenovo for doing so. In CPU work, I was also very impressed. It maintains a high turbo boost at stock but undervolt and we get class leading performance. This is my fastest time in handbrake using the 8758 CPU. Even rendering a 4K video using Adobe Premiere Pro, the CPU annihilated the 8758 in my Triton 500. The power brick it comes with is 230 watts and for some reason Lenovo made it pretty big. Shame really, because it does add to the package weight, so bear this in mind if you do travel a lot. Here is a shot showing how it compares to the 180 watt brick on the 2080 Max-Q Triton 500. At full load, I saw a power pull of 172 watts, so I'm pretty glad that they actually went with a 230 watt brick. As my thumbnail said, I am speechless. I have seen my model priced there at under $1400 before. And even at the current price of $1630, it is great value. It performs very close to a full 2070 or 2080 Max-Q at a much more competitive price level. If you look at performance per dollar, the Y740 must be one of the best I have tested. Now its speakers are good, it has decent panel for gaming and media consumption, and it has an option for G-Sync or Optimus. Now despite its small battery, it did last four hours, plus it has rapid charge. It actually gains 40% of its charge in only 23 minutes. Now the keyboard is okay, although it may take some time getting used to it being pushed, you know, slightly to the right. And the position of the Lenovo Vantage button, you know, relative to the escape key may take some getting used to. The RGP lighting is great, and the fact that they uh, light up the rear port symbols, you know, I think is a very nice touch. Now it's power brick, you know, it could be smaller, and indeed, they should work on that for the next Y version, the Y750. Now I hear that they are moving the webcam you know, up top for that model as well, which is good. Now would I choose it over the G7? Absolutely. And I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Remember, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.